Hi, welcome to Brookfield Zoo. This is, uh, this is located 30 minutes from Chicago and it is the second largest zoo in Illinois. There's over 216 acres and there's over 2,000 animals inside. Brookfield Zoo was opened on July 1st, 1934 by a woman named Edith Rockefeller McCormick. Matter of fact, she wanted to open up a zoo that had no bars, kind of like the ones in Europe at the time. So the Brookfield Zoo is the first zoo in the United States to have no bars for the animals. And you can actually look out while the animals are exploring their own space. My name is Kiki, and today we're gonna explore some fun animal facts. And today we're going to Brookfield Zoo to check out some Bactrian camels. This is where our Bactrian camels live. Now these two Bactrian camels, their names are Christina and Ray Ray. Now what's interesting about Bactrian camels is that Bactrian camels have two humps like the capital letter B, where dromedary camels have one hump like the capital letter D. Now Bactrian camels, also known as Camelus Bactrianus, are actually from Asia's central and east rocky deserts, also known as the Gobi Deserts. Now Bactrian camels can grow to be over seven feet tall at the hump, and they can weigh over 1,800 pounds. They are critically endangered, but zoos and nature parks are actually trying to help these guys out, and their numbers are steadily growing, and they're on the rise, which is awesome. There is what's known as sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism basically means where one gender is is a little bit different than another gender. Now these guys have sexual dimorphism because the males are generally larger than the females and that is how you can tell two camels apart sometimes. Now as you can see, Christina and Ray Ray have more of a tannish brown coat, but Bactrian camels can have anywhere from a dark brown, tannish brown, or even a grayish brown uh, with their coats. Now another cool thing about these camels is that they actually have the ability to shed their coat. So during the winter, as you can see, they still have their winter coats. They still have the long, shaggy uh, fur that's still clinging to them. But during the spring and summer years, or sorry, during the spring and summer, they will actually start shedding that coat and they will kind of be more of a baldish color. They'll still have the same color, but they won't have the long fur. Uh, that's because in the Gobi Desert, the winter, the night, especially the nights can get over to negative under negative 20 degrees at night and in the summer it can get well over 100 degrees as well and that is what's what they do they shed their they shed their coats and they grow it back on here's a fun question for you what do you think those humps are filled with do you think it's a water B fat or C ice cream sandwiches It's actually B, fat. Now, these guys' humps, they're filled with fat because that is how they that is how they store their energy for long distance travels across the desert. Sometimes they can't, they don't get water, they don't get food, so they have to store that up in their humps. The reason why they're not filled with water or anything else is because if they were filled with water, they would be kind of saggy and they'd be flopping all over the place, kind of like a water balloon. So that stores up the more solid, the more solid it stores up the more the more solid of the two. Now, also an interesting fact, you can always tell the difference between a healthy camel and a camel that's kind of, you know, getting down to their last portion of fat because when a camel's fat uh, reserves start depleting, their humps actually do go soggy and floppy and they So, and as you can tell, these guys are being very well taken care of, very well fed, and very well watered. Now, what's awesome is that a camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in 20 minutes. That is the equivalent of drinking an entire bathtub in about 15, 20 minutes, or you drinking 300 cans of soda in about 20 minutes, which do not try that at home. I 
highly are highly against it. During mating season, the male, although some sources cannot tell who the alpha male will be in the camel herd, uh, in the camel caravan, the camel flock, the male will actually mate with all the females in the caravan. Now, they will fight, bite, snort, vomit uh, against other males so that way they can have breeding rights. Now, camels will be pregnant for over a year. Uh, approximately 360 to 440 days they are pregnant. They'll nurse one baby, but very rarely will they have twins. Twins still happen, but it's very rare. Camels normally only have one baby. Once the camels are sexually mature, they will still stay with their mother for up to three to five years, but then after that, they go off and they find their own herd. Mother camels can become very close to their children, which is actually amazing for the animal world. Now, the, these mothers can actually be so close to their children that they will mourn the loss of a child for up to six months. Here's a cool fact. Camels are actually omnivores. Now, they will eat anything from plants to they'll eat, if, if they're really desperate enough, they'll eat the glue off of shoes. And camels have been known to actually chew bones to get the marrow and the protein out of those bones. They're, they're known to chew on uh, flesh and they're also known to eat fish as well. Also what's cool is that Bactrian camels will literally dig under the snow to find food if times are hard. Now that is actually a practice only known to the Bactrian camels out of the other camels in that family. Now the biggest predators of the Bactrian camels are the wolves, the cats, and even humans. Even though wolves and cats only go after camels during uh, dietary distresses, humans are actually the number one predator of these camels. Humans will use camels as uh, food, their skin, their sinew, or their bones. Did you know that camels actually do not spit? That's not spit that's coming out of their mouths. That's actually projectile vomiting. And what's cool is that when they projectile vomit, it's a way to get rid of danger, including fighting males, other males, or even predators. So if you find a camel and they spit, it's not technically spit, it's vomit. Now, if you learned something about Bactrian camels, make sure you give a big like and a subscribe, and then we'll learn more about more animals around here at the zoo. Now, thank you so much for joining the first episode of Kiki's Fun Animal Facts. I'm planning on doing these videos at least every Friday if I can, so make sure that you subscribe and press that little bell on the bottom so that way you can get notified. We'd like to go to different zoos and educate people on more animals and more conservation charities and more and more and more. I want to educate the world on how cool these animals are and how interesting everybody everybody at the zoo is. So make sure that you make sure that you check us out. The next animal we discover in our next episode is actually a hint on the bottom of the on the bottom of the video uh, in the description below. Now the riddle was what is an Australian animal's favorite beat 'em up game? And that that will that gives a hint to our next animal, which is Mortal Wombat. All right. So make sure you check out our next episode. We're heading we're heading inside Australia to check out some southern hairy nosed wombats. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Um, this is basically our conservation shout out. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna shout out a conservation fund that you can donate to to help animals and the education um, to help people learn more about animals. Kind of like what this channel is, uh, what this channel's mission is for. So our first charity, or our first uh, conservation shout out is gonna be for the Brookfield Zoo Conservation Fund. Money raised through the conservation fund will actually help out um, towards the Chicago Zoological Society conservation research and education efforts um, at the Brookfield Zoo and also around the world. Now, um, it also funds for two major programs, and one of those programs is the Center for the Science of Animal Care and Welfare. So basically, uh, your donation will actually go towards uh, learning more about animals in their natural habitat and in a zoo habitat as well. It also goes towards uh, helping for uh, enrichment programs and enrichment items at the zoo as well. Now, uh, you'll see animals with, uh, with uh, uh, little balls and toys in their yards or uh, climbing trees, swinging trees, 
all sorts of really cool things, and that is all through your donation. If you want to help these animals have fun and, uh, you know, just be part of the crowd, then, you know, make sure you donate to the, to the Brookfield Zoo Conservation Fund. Also, it goes towards the Center for Conservation Leadership. This award-winning program actually connects and enriches people in conservation and provides educational opportunities for those interested, including teachers, students, and the community around the well, here and around the world. So make sure, uh, I'll put a link in the description below for uh, a way to donate to that. Also, we're, we'll be starting a Patreon really soon, so you can donate to there, and we can donate directly from the Patreon to the, conser or to the conservation fund of the day. So thank you very much, have a great day, and uh, this is Cookie. He is, uh, this is the statue of Cookie. The real Cookie it, uh, was, a, was an actual bird here at the zoo who was born from 1933 and passed away in, in 2016. He is one of the, he is the oldest member here at the zoo. He's been here for over 80 years. Now, uh, your donation and your funding for the conservation fund helped uh, animals like Cookie live great lives for those 80 plus years. So thanks again and have a great day. We'll see you next week. See ya.